What's up everybody, it's me E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews and welcome to episode 11 of the recap with E-Man as I catch you up on all the latest news in the entertainment world that you might have missed out on. There is a ton of stuff that we need to talk about with the Snyder Cut being released on HBO Max, then we've got even more John Wick that we might have bargained for. And there's an interesting rumor about the Loki series that's going to be coming to Disney+. Plus. All of that, plus more, coming up next. Alright, well let's jump right into it with the Snyder Cut. Of course, this was huge news that dropped earlier this week. In case you don't know what the Snyder Cut is, if you are unfamiliar with the situation... Go look at my last episode, episode 10, where I break down all the news and all the information for you and get you caught up on it. But, of course, because this dropped, there was more information that was dropping like almost daily. And one of the things that was released was that the Snyder Cut was going to be a four-hour movie because that's just the, how much footage that Snyder had originally captured. But there's also talk that Snyder actually pitched to HBO Max a, a different format, like more of an episodic format, and that this entire thing would be something entirely new. At first, I was kind of thinking to myself, like, you know what, if you shot this as a movie, and if it happened to be four hours long, just drop it as four hours. I don't want to break it up in parts. You know, some people were talking about doing that with, like, The Irishman. You know, you could watch it at one point and stop. No, no, no. If you intended for me to watch a movie all the way through and if it happened to be four hours long that's the way i want to take it but if it is true that snyder has actually restructured uh his justice league version and broken it up into you know different cliffhangers and different ways to uh make it feel more like episodes then i'm okay with that then we also got news that dark side is confirmed to show up in the snyder cut Actor Ray Porter has gone on Twitter and he's basically been able to break his silence after the news dropped that he is the one that's going to be playing Darkseid. So, once again, hey, I'm fine with it. You know, um, I know that Snyder's was, he was always supposed to have like a much darker side of with his Justice League. And the one that we got in theaters was like the washed down Marvel fun injected Joss Whedon stuff. So, you know, if you're going to bring dark side, I'm cool with it. Um, I get the impression though, that uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do very much with him. Um, from some of the reports that I, re uh, that I read like a while back, dark side only kind of teases himself, you know, maybe, during one of the battles or he just shows up really quickly at the end of the movie so eh, don't know about that but this goes into another report which is that Zack Snyder actually tried to make this new Snyder cut uh, more conclusive so we'll actually get more closure because originally this was supposed to you know set up Justice League 2 and maybe like another movie but it sounds like from certain reports that Zack Snyder is going to retool his Snyder Cut and make it just something more self-contained. Which, again, I am very okay with. Because the one thing I would not like to happen is to get this Snyder Cut and then all of a sudden get our hopes up for something that either is not going to happen because WB is already going in a different direction. Or we have to go through, release the Snyder Cut, Justice League 2 all over again like i don't want to have to keep going through this back and forth you know i just want people to um tell a story and end the story that's it you know what happened to Zack snyder was really messed up and i do fully support um releasing the snyder cut mainly because of how bogus wb kind of played him right like as an artist that's not really cool as a content creator it's not cool to sit here to have all your work there you have a really messed up situation happening in your life and then the company's like ah, all right whatever get out of here you know like that is just kind of bogus so i'm fine with them just being like all right you know what here's how we can make amends you can have your story told the way you want to. And, well, you know, well, it's HBO giving him the money, not necessarily WB Pictures. But he's getting the opportunity to tell the story 
as much as possible given his uh, situation. And in addition to uh, Darkseid being confirmed, during the Man of Steel watch party earlier this week, Zack Snyder also uh, let go of some uh, some Easter eggs where he was saying that Basically, the Doomsday that we saw was not the original Doomsday. So, uh, supposedly, there was another Doomsday, the original Doomsday, that uh, probably led to the destruction of Krypton and on their moon, because there's like a broken moon or destructed moon uh, in Man of Steel, and that was because of Doomsday. So, you know, for Zack Snyder, what he's trying to allude to is that the Doomsday that we saw was not the actual Doomsday and that the real original Doomsday could always return. And this is where I have to pump the brakes. This is what kind of like has always been my issue with Zack Snyder. And I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. I commend this guy for his passion and his intention. He is a true comic book fan at heart. And I love what he wants to do with these movies. But he just gets ahead of himself. Because even if you lay out that really cool uh, uh, Easter egg, and that would have been cool had you not crammed and rushed and wasted Superman's death. You could have teased us with a premature doomsday and Superman just defeat them. You know, you could have just done that. And then maybe when the original Doomsday comes, now you have him go toe-to-toe with Superman and they just die or something. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, he has great vision. He has great, you know, ideas. But then they just get either too big or he starts doing way too much. And this was another example of doing too much by trying to say, oh, yeah, there are other Doomsdays out there. Well, let me tell you the reason why it's too much. The sole purpose of Doomsday. Doomsday was created to kill Superman. When you waste that, you give up basically your biggest ace in the hole. So that's why it's a problem. Yes, it's a nice idea that uh, more Doomsdays are out there. Yes, it's also been done later on in other comics and in uh, even the animated series. But you still wasted the death. So that kind of sucks. Moving on. There are also reports that are saying that there will be no reshoots. Now, actors will be coming back to do additional dialogue, right? So maybe some uh, extra voiceover work or they'll be doing some other things to kind of help the story uh, tie in a little bit better. But initial reports right now are saying that the original actors are not going to come back and reshoot scenes and do, you know, so you might not see... Uh, uh, Gal Gadot get back into her costume you might not see Ben Affleck come back as Batman you know they might come and do some audio but that's about it now this is the problem that I have with all of this news we can't confirm anything so everything I just told you take it with a grain of salt because on one side you'll have people that are breaking the news and they're saying no reshoots this person's coming back this person is not coming back or this is happening and then on the other side you'll have all these other people that are saying oh well there will be reshoots and there will be doing this and they will and it's like it's starting to get frustrating because this is no longer you know similar to like um getting information from cosmic book news or we got to cover you know places where you could kind of just be like yeah all right whatever but now it's coming from sources that you know uh, uh like the rap.com which you know usually is pretty decent then you have grace randolph you know youtuber movie critic person or whatever and she's saying opposite stuff so all i could say right now when it comes to the snyder cut take it all with a grain of salt At this point, we all have to be on wait and see mode because no one has like reliable sources because people have been proven wrong. Information has changed and it's it's kind of a bit of a headache, to be honest with you. But um, I'm just going to wait and see what happens, because like a lot of people, I think um, I'm not sitting here like 
super excited for the Snyder Cut, but I am very curious for it. So I do want to see what's going to happen, and then I'll make my mind up from that point on. Now, the other issue that's happening with the Snyder Cut is people are asking the question, is this going to become a trend? Is this going to be an issue where... Um, you know, directors or fans, you know, if something comes out and they don't like it, well, we got to go through all of this again. We got to petition all over again. We got to, you know, hashtag all over again. We have to, you know, just do whatever to get alternate versions of movies. And, you know, the latest person that's getting kind of caught up in this is David Ayer. And if you recall, David Ayer was the director of Suicide Squad. Now, let me tell you something. Suicide Squad was a mess. That was a bad movie. I don't even think like the most diehard DC fans can make valid excuses for Suicide Squad. It was just, it it dropped the ball. It had potential. Now, and that's not to say that there were bad things. Will Smith, good, you know, uh, as Deadshot. Uh, Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie, great, cool, but there was a lot of stuff that was just not good with this movie. You know, Jared Leto had a lot of scenes reportedly uh, cut off and, and left on the cutting floor. So David Ayer, he, you know, ever since the Snyder Cut dropped, he started dropping on his Twitter page these images of the Joker, Jared Leto's version and a lot of people are already starting saying, like, okay, well, is this release the air cut? Like, are, is this what we're about to start doing now? And, you know, recently, Ayer also confirmed on Twitter that uh, his air cut actually does exist. So, I don't really know what to make of that. If anything, I feel like, you know, especially if you got the DVD, you probably already got to see a lot of the additional footage anyway that was cut. For me, it was kind of like, you know, this is a very different situation um, than what happened with Zack Snyder. You know, Ayer was always on board. He didn't have like a tragedy or some issue that would uh, uh, take him off the project. And while he was shooting, being a company man, He was saying very adamantly that what you saw in theaters was his cut. That's his version. And he was very, very adamant about that. Maybe that was just the contract agreement talking. I don't know. To me, I don't really think it matters. I don't think that if you add more Jared Leto scenes uh, as the Joker, that it's going to help the movie. Uh, In order to fix Suicide Squad... You just need another Suicide Squad movie, which is why I'm more excited about James Gunn's version of Suicide Squad than trying to go rewatch David Ayer's version. And it's sad to me because I really like David Ayer as a director, and I think that the moment that they tried to lighten up Suicide Squad and make it more Marvel fun, it was just downhill from there. They should have made it rated R, super serious, darker, all of that, but... I don't know. Do you have confidence that if there is a A A or cut, that it'll be better than what we saw? Would you be curious to actually go see it? Let me know in the comments because I'm curious. I'm more curious to see Snyder Cut than I am the A or cut. And yeah, that's, I don't know. That's all I got for that. All right, moving on. Sony has some new Spider-Man movies uh, in development and no... I don't even know if the, Spider-Man is not like the main character. Uh, there are two female centric uh, movies. One is going to be about a character named Jackpot. So these are characters that exist in the Spider-Man universe. So Spider-Man exists there. I don't know if he'll be showing up, but you know, maybe you see him in a poster or something or in the news in the background or whatever. Um, but Jackpot is coming jackpot is like some story about a a mom who gets like superpowers and that's all i know about that i it's one of those really obscure characters then there's another project coming down the line that is going to be based on the madam web character uh that's kind of interesting because i always you know look i was introduced to madam web from the animated spider-man series and i never saw her as a 
person that would have a solo movie. I just saw her more so as like being a background figure, someone who would pop up and help Spider-Man out, you know, for a bigger, grander scheme of things type of situation. But, you know, they're supposedly saying that, you know, they're going to work on a movie for her. Uh, There were rumors that either Amy Adams or Charlize Theron might be playing her, but, you know, that's all speculation for now. Um, Are you excited for that? Like, do you do you want to see a Madam Web movie? Um, How do you feel about a jackpot movie? Uh, Because the last I heard, I I heard that they were going to do a Silver Sable and a Black Cat movie, which probably had a little bit more potential of being you know interesting and more exciting um i think at this point sony needs to if they're gonna do these movies i don't even think they need to sell them as being within the spider-man realm honestly like i feel like you should just make the movie as though it's a standalone and then because they're so unknown you can kind of surprise people by including spider-man-esque things in there because you don't want to raise people's expectations by saying hey this is in the spider-man universe and spider-man pops up for like this amount of time ah i i I don't know you want to see if they can stand on their own i don't know if they will or not but it'll be something interesting to see all right moving on we have ruby rose who was batwoman on the cw series she has dropped out of from the whole show and this is right after season two just got the green light. She's just done. And that's it. That's all the news there is to it. <laughs> like some people were thinking maybe it was because of an injury. Some people were thinking maybe it was because of the, the harassment that she was getting online. Some people were saying, you know, she's not gay enough or she's not Jew- Jewish enough to play the role, whatever. But for whatever reason, She's just out. So I I have not heard, and maybe somebody can refresh my memory, of someone who is on a show as the lead, you get greenlit for another season, and then you just drop out. So that's it. <laughs> now, did you like the Jurassic World movies? If you did, get ready for even more Jurassic World. The producer basically was being interviewed And they said that the dinosaurs are now on the mainland amongst us, and they will be for some time. And there were reports that basically they could have almost like nine Jurassic World movies. Whew, wow. Um, That's a lot of dinosaurs. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm somewhat interested in the idea of dinosaurs being among us and, like, how do you adapt? What do you do, you know? Um, it kind of almost gives me a Planet of the Apes type of vibe to it, but it, eh, I don't know if I really want nine of these movies. I, I To me, it's always a stretch when you start pushing things out this early. You know, like if there's a natural progression, sure, but when you do it this early, it just feels very premature. Speaking of which, so the writer for John Wick, he was doing this interview And I want you to listen to his quote. This is what he said in his quote. I think the other thing, too, is to Keanu Reeves' credit and to his career, he's done very few sequels. He found something very special in John Wick that is very important to him that is both spoken and unspoken. I don't know how many more there will be, but I think the plan right now is, at the very least, four to five. Now, this is kind of strange because when he said that I don't know how many there'll be, and the plan is at least four to five. I think some people were interpreting that to mean that there were going to be four to five more John Wicks. But I'm hoping that he's just saying there will only be chapter four and maybe chapter five, and that's it. And that's what I'm kind of hoping for, because... Like I just said, I don't want movies to just keep on going on and on and on, especially if it doesn't have like a a very interesting, compelling story. Yeah, I'm thinking about you, Fast and the Furious, because those movies just milk it. 
They they just milk it. They they put like ridiculous storylines with ridiculous crazy stunts. And I don't want that for John Wick. I want something if you if you've got a great story, fine. I'm cool. But if John Wick starts coming back and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna start killing everybody because it's about family, I'm done. I'm done, done, done. I don't <sighs> now moving on to the MCU. Uh, there is some speculation out there that the Loki series that's coming on to Disney Plus might actually be greenlit for a second season already. Now, this comes because of a quote from Clark Gregg on Variety. Uh, this is what he had to say. I'd be lying if I didn't say, boy, that would be really interesting to start the experiment over. Doing 10 episodes or 12 episodes the way Tom Hiddleston told me he was doing on Loki with that kind of budget and that Marvel Cinematic Production team. Well, some people are saying that this was kind of like a slip up, right? Because a lot of the other Disney Plus shows, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier or um, WandaVision, for example, those all have supposedly only six episodes. But if, you know, Tom Hiddleston is telling uh, Clark Gregg that he's filming 10 to 12 Maybe there's a second season already greenlit. Now, hey, this is not going to be uncommon for uh, Disney+. Plus. We already know Mandalorian, for example, that has already gotten a season three confirmation. And season two hasn't even dropped yet. So nothing is official, but there is some potential if this is true. Like if this is a real slip up that Loki could be getting a second season already before productions even ended so we'll see what happens all right so this is the part of the show where i basically tell you what i've been watching over the week and all um still watching rebels getting so much better love it um i'm getting a little bit closer to the end of season two uh i finished my hero academia yes i know i'm a little late on that but i waited you know to binge season four um, because I hate all the filler episodes and I'm glad I did because that last season was after the, uh, middle half of the season or whatever. The second half was just not that good. So I'm kind of disappointed with that, but I also did get a chance to check out lovebirds on uh, Netflix. Ah, yeah, that was just date night with a diverse cast. I'm sorry. I didn't care for it too much. I know comedy is subjective. Um, I, I got a couple chuckles in here and there. Um, but I feel like when you just make, this is the perfect example of like when trying to be diverse just doesn't work, you know, like I, obviously I'm all for representation, obviously, but, um, I don't like it when a movie just puts people in there and you ignore all these other things. I'm sitting here like, yo, I'm more interested in the fact that there's a black woman and an Indian guy. And to be very honest with you, I don't really see that type of couple in everyday life or on the big screen. I mean, I'd be much more interested in their cultural differences, their uh, food likes and preferences, you know, religion, whatever. But we just got date night with like a different cast and it was just like, okay, I guess. All right. Ha -ha. I already forgot it. It was predictable. It just wasn't a good movie to me, but I don't know. What are you guys watching? Let me know in the comments. I always like to hear you know, especially if there's some uh, good recommendations out there for other people to check out. But anyway, that's all I got for today. Thank you all so much for taking the time to join me. I always appreciate it. If you have any questions, topics, or anything you'd like to shoot over to me, you can always email me at askeman411 at gmail.com. That's askeman411 at gmail.com. Look, I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.